Netherlands. So it is very important for us to be able to invite people to come over um, to this English speaking service. Um, so yes, now um, this message is called The Doors. Now, most of you probably remember the, the band, The Doors. I'm not sure if you remember that. It's one of my favorite bands as I was growing up, especially in my life without Christ. And it was one of the, my favorite bands, as I mentioned, uh, of all times, The Doors. I really enjoyed the, their music. And I remember playing it loud in the car when I was driving my 1985 Ford Tempo down the streets of San Salvador. And I would listen early in the morning at 6 o'clock with the radio full volume as I'm listening to Raiders of the Storm or A Light Night Fire. Some of you may remember those old songs. And mind you, those are before my time. Uh, but I still enjoy them anyway. So The Doors. But before we do that, before we start talking about The Doors and their music and whatnot, which is what we're not going to do today, is how about we start with prayer and then we'll read a verse which will be up there in a minute. But let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you once again for the privilege uh, that you give us as your children to be able to be here in your home for a second time this day, Sunday, the 17th of March. We praise you, Lord, for all you do for us and all you give us. Uh, we want to give you all the honor, all the glory for everything that we say, everything that we do. And then everything that we talk about today may bring you that honor and that glory that only you deserve. I pray that, that you bless every family represented here this afternoon on this wonderful day it is a hot day and it's a perhaps a tiring day but lord we know that you have given us this day for us to enjoy so we thank you for that uh i ask lord that you soften our hearts may be able to hear what it is that you want to speak to us about today may your word penetrate the deepest part of our hearts of our souls and our minds and as we leave here later tonight May we be able to put into practice what it is that you want from us in our lives. So once again, we give you all the honor and glory. And we ask all of this and a whole lot more in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right. So um, this morning, I want to talk to you about, and let's start with the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse number 2. And the word of God says this. And if we could read this together, all right, out loud, because I want you to remember a few things. So let's read it together. And it says... I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break the pieces, the gates of bronze, and cut the bars of iron. Now, I always thought that the doors or the music was a great way for me to start my day early in the morning. I wanted to start pump. I wanted to start hyped. Um, and depending on what the world or what the day was going to throw at me. Later in life, the doors, or doors in general, would bring about a different meaning in my spiritual walk. How many here have missed out on a job opportunity at one stage in their lives? I think all of us. How many of us have uh, missed out on a promotion perhaps? I think all of us. How many of us have missed out on a pay rise? I think most of us, if not all of us. Now, or simply missed out on an opportunity to move forward in any aspect of life. I think all of us here. Sometimes we become disillusioned when doors slam shut on us. Who's had a door slam shut on us? I'm not talking about the one, the one that your wife throws at you when you're like, no more of a door an opportunity i think every single one of us has had that door shut in one way or another even though we may want that thing really bad and we want to make sure that it is us that gets that opportunity it is us that goes through that door it's suddenly shut sealed however whether that door is shut and locked completely we can, it can mean something different when we try to see God's vantage point or God's perspective. It would actually make more sense to us. The problem is that when doors are shut for us and locked for us, we dwell on the fact that that door has been locked and that door has been shut. Now, we read this morning, we know 
For those of you who have been watching or listening or being here in the mornings talking about in Christ and how we were predestined. So we've heard of that. So we know that God has always had a plan for every single one of us. Even when we don't understand what the plan is in our lives. Or when it doesn't make any sense. And this includes when doors are being shut in front of us. We think we've got everything ready and we say, you know what, I'm ready to go. That blessing is mine. I'm ready. I know I've got that job. I know I've got that opportunity. I know that it'll be better for us. And suddenly, the rug gets pulled under your feet. The door gets closed in front of you. But what do we do? We actually focus on the fact that the door is locked. We don't focus on the fact that uh, it, there's a reason behind it, but we're only looking at the door and we see that door closed and we want to know and we want to have what's behind that door. But what we really need to do is trust in God and allow Him to guide us when we're standing in front of that locked door. We need to remember that everything that we live through and everything that we endure is in our favor. Even if the door is locked, even if the carpet has been pulled under your feet, even when things are going smoothly for you and you think you've got it made and all of a sudden you, someone is knocking at your door with a problem for you. Excuse me. We need to make sure and understand that we need to trust God no matter what doors are closed in front of you. Where God says in the book of Proverbs, chapter five, chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, and it says this, and it will show up on the screen in a minute, where it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Now I'm going to stop right here. What does that mean? Don't think that because you are tough. Don't think that because you are intelligent beyond comprehension. Don't think because Mr. Wallet is full and thick in your pockets. It's not about you. It's about God. And we need to trust Him with all of our hearts and lean not on your own understanding or your own strength. And in verse 6, it continues to say, In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. So when a door closes, it's not the fact that you aren't good enough. It's not the fact that you perhaps you did not deserve it. You could deserve it. But the Word of God says He will direct your path. Perhaps God does not want you to go through that door even though it is what you desire the most. God does not want you to go through that for a reason. So let me tell you something this morning. I'm really good at having doors closed on me. Many, many doors. Along my, since I was 15, I began working at a butcher, helping out at Footscray. And I've had many doors closed from that point onwards till now, many doors have closed. But let me tell you something. And I want you to tell your neighbor, doors will close. Don't be afraid, just tell them, you know. But tell them like you mean it, hey, suit up. Count, but you know, doors are going to close. Now it's a new doors are going to close. You know, say it like you mean it. But when will these doors close? When? Well, the first thing is they're going to close when we are not ready. That's the first thing. You may want what's behind door number one, but hey, you may not, or we may not be ready for what's behind door number one. Sometimes we want something so great. Sometimes we, we desire with all of our hearts and all of our wills, but we may not be ready to have that yet. On one occasion, I remember I was very anxious about a goal I wanted to reach. I, I wanted time to pass really quickly, and, and I had, you know, worked so hard for that, and, but I wanted things now. But suddenly, and I didn't get it. This is a job. I dreamed about it. I prayed about it, and, and prayed and prayed, I really wanted the job, and suddenly I said to Mirna, Mirna, you know what, I think it's, it's in the bag, it's mine. I've been to the interview twice, and it's mine, I'm going to earn a lot of money, and I'm going to be there, but suddenly, nothing. 
and I was angry and I was disappointed and I felt sad and I felt depressed. But then God's word came to me in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 9. And the word of God said, A man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. So I planned it. And I already had a vision of buying a new car and going on a trip and doing whatever, but God said, no, you are not ready. I planned it, and he executed it, literally. But also, I kept reading the book of Proverbs that same couple of days later, I went on to, uh, and this was on the 16th of the month, and I remember on the 19th of the month, and I'm reading Proverbs again, uh, Proverbs number 19, verse 21. And again, God came to me because I was still disappointed and I really wanted that job and I really was depressed. And he said to me, a man's heart plans his ways. And again, do I have that in the same one? No, there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. Again, it's not what I want. Is what he wants and I understood then that I wasn't ready that it wasn't for me for whatever reason this made me understand that I was not ready for something so big I fully understood it then and there and I accepted it it wasn't easy to accept I can tell you this it wasn't but I did eventually Sometimes it is worse to receive certain things, especially when you're not prepared to receive them. Sometimes it is worse to receive certain things, especially when you're not ready to receive or prepared to receive them. If we do not have a spiritual and emotional maturity, the integrity of character, the necessary, the necessity of knowledge or, or the necessary knowledge, the experience, or things that we need in order to be able to get those blessings. If we're not ready, it can be a bad decision or we step into things that we cannot do. It won't be a blessing, but perhaps a curse if we're not ready. So again, why will doors close? Because we're not ready. So if, you, if a door has closed or last week on you or is closing, perhaps you're not ready. The other reason why these doors may close on us is because when we have made a mistake. Sometimes doors close on us due to our own mistakes. For having informed or not being informed enough of what we want to do. We haven't taken the precautions to get and have an opportunity ready. I remember four years ago, and I remember some of the brothers that I um, I attended my previous church with, I remember we talked about, hey, why don't we open up and, and get together and have a new, a new church? Let's start a new church together. And it was great, and it was really hot, and we were talking about this, and we were praying about this. And I remember then Pastor Emilio saying to me, well, you got to be careful because these people's lives, spiritual lives, are in your hands. I knew then that I was not ready. Hey, I know now that I'm still not ready. And perhaps I was going to make a mistake if I did that. Because I wasn't ready and I could have made a mistake. Now, I didn't want to rush into things. I, you know, the important thing is, if something is, there's an opportunity there, a door that is open, don't rush in. Don't get too excited, especially when we do not understand certain things or how they work. More importantly, when we don't consult and speak to God about these opportunities. Like that old hymn that says, Wise men say, only fools rush in. Play our brother Elvis Presley. Only fools rush in. 
This is so true in the things that we do in life. We want things so bad that we don't think about it. We just do and we just take. How many of us here have made that mistake of rushing in? Just me. Amen. You guys are not rushers. Great. You guys aren't fools. Just me. Now, the book of Peter says this. First of Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it tells you, casting all your care upon him. For he cares for you. When do we stop rushing? And when we start giving God the priority of the things that we want to do, He will make sure that things happen to us in His time and with His will. Because we're not rushing in. Some versions of different Bibles, instead of saying care, it says, put all your anxiety all your worries, all your doubts in God. So don't rush. Give it to God. Bring it to God in what? In prayer. In prayer. There's a hymn that says that. If you got a worry, bring it to God in prayer. If there's something that you want, bring it to God in prayer. If there's a door that you want to go through, don't rush, but give it to God in prayer. Pastor Emilio said to me one day, Carlos, don't rush. Wait. Wait. And I, and it was, wasn't easy, but he said to me, wait. Don't rush. Don't rush. And it's hard because I want to get things done. But I've also learned to learn to wait. And cast and give all my anxieties to God and bring it to Him in prayer. There are people who want to make a lot of money with business. You know, they don't know how to, but they want to make a lot of money. And perhaps they haven't trained to get a lot of money, but they just want it. You know, there are a lot of people who want to do certain jobs, but they don't have the qualifications. You know, I, I, and I know a lot of people that always tell me, how much I want I want to earn this much and I want to get this job and I want to do that. You know, great. What do you have to show for it? Nothing. So well, how, how are you expecting to get that position if you don't have something? If you haven't worked for it? You need to do the hard yards. It is not logical. You know, if I want to work as a doctor, but I'm not a doctor, I can't expect to be one. So we need to get things going. You want doors to open. Give it to God. But you need to do something as well. Don't just sit there. It's interesting that Adam and I, and I guess Craig as well, we've been blessed to the fact that we're able to serve in our church here through, through preaching, through teaching. And, but we haven't just been given the, the privilege. We're also working hard behind the scenes through our studies, through our own uh, relationship with Christ in order to be prepared for this moment. Now, it doesn't mean that if you want to do something that you can't. You need to be prepared. You need to train yourself. You want to walk through that door, you know, whether it's success or whether it's a ministry, whatever it is that you want to do, give it to God, bring it to God, pray about it, but prepare yourself as well. Don't expect to be given opportunities when you don't work hard for them. You know, when you're not perhaps qualified for those positions. Hey, you may be me. What do we need to do? We need to focus. Not on the door, but focus on God. You want that door to open? Focus on God. You want that door that is shut to open? Focus on God. But when we do, focusing God, let's not worry about, or let's not just sit down and wait. I'm going to wait till God opens that door. Do something about it. Work hard for it. Get that door open. But you also need to do something behind the scenes. You need to be faithful to God. You need to serve God. You need to train yourself for that door to open. Someone once said to me this. Someone said, God closes doors that no man can open. God closes doors that no man can open. 
just like he opens doors that no man can shut. That means that God has blessings for you, just for you in every aspect of your life. The doors will open for you, and no one, no matter what they do against you or what they plot against you, it will not prevail. Because God has opened that door, not man. But it also tells us that God closes certain doors for you, something that you may desire, but He closes them because He wants something better for you. How true is this? And I know that most of us have experienced this. I know that most of us, for example, when we left our countries of origin, we left and we left our families behind, our loved ones behind, our country that we love perhaps, things that we love, to come to a new country where we knew no one, and perhaps doors will be closing here. And but let me tell you this. I can guarantee you that you are blessed beyond your imagination right now from where you were. 20 years ago, from where you were 30 years ago, from where you were 40 years ago. And I can guarantee you that a lot of doors have closed, but you are still blessed beyond your belief because of what God has done for you. We need to thank God for these doors that have closed because He intended, He pretends, He wants to bless you even more through these apparent setbacks. It is time for us to detect what we are not fully ready for. If there's something that you want with all your heart and desires, if you really want it, but if God doesn't want you to have it yet, you need to identify it. You need to identify that perhaps you're not ready, but you also need to identify the fact that you need to do something about it and become ready and learn, and try to gain intelligence, and try to get knowledge for that door to open widely. Because God will say, hey, guess what? You've done the hard yards. You've actually prepared yourself for this blessing. The door will open. And no one will be able to shut that door. Doors also close when we're not quite there yet. We may think that we're ready, God, you know what, I, I, I went to Bible college and I spent 12 years there and I've done a master's and I've done everything else and I'm now master of the universe, you can call me He-Man, but you may not be there yet. You may, you may think you're ready, but you're not. You may be the person that is, you know, the best preacher in the world, but God's closing doors because but you're not there yet. You may be the best handyman in the world, but you're not there yet for that particular blessing. There are those who are very insightful and witty to come up with things where they quickly create projects, ministries, build businesses, give ideas to others so others can do businesses. I call these people operational doers. They get things done. Hey, you know, hey, we need to do this. Hey, let's do it. You, you, and you, let's get together we'll do it. And often, things get done, and they get done well, often. Not only just to look busy and active, but they get the job done. However, many of these things, a lot of the time, do not work. Simply because they're just human ideas. They don't have a beginning with God. They have a beginning with man. How about we do this? How about instead of doing this, we'll do something else? Because I thought of it. It's not about that. It's about beginning with God. There are things that are not a sign or in place in God's agenda. We need to ask God, what is it that you want from me? Now, be careful when you do this. When you ask God what He wants from you, like I did many, many years ago, I said to Him, God, what do you want from me? And I remember the pastor moving away and said to me, be careful, and I'm moving away before you get hit by lightning. Because He will tell you what He wants from you, even if you don't want to do it. I actually said that to someone this morning. 
Ask God what He wants from you, but be mindful that He will tell you, and you have to do it. When too many times you insist with something that has no results, or very little results, just let it go. Change this place, or change the method, or change the idea. I like what Adam said, we've been here for almost two years having this service. Our intention was to reach out, and it still is our intention, to reach out to the community. I'm glad to have every single one of you few but faithful. But the method perhaps that we're using is no longer valid or active or, or worthwhile. Let's change it. Let's use the children who are our biggest asset to be able to reach the communities. We all have families and friends uh, or young families with kids. Do you know what? Let's invite them to come here and, and, and let's make God, as always, the focus of, of the the primary focus of what we do, but let's use our children because the primary focus of Tottenham Baptist Church is not the present, but the future, and the future are our children. When we see 10 kids up here singing, when we see them at Sunday school, when we see them every day loving to come or coming to church, that's it. That's the method. The will of God is for this place not to close, but to continue, and we can see that on a Sunday morning. But let's continue, not assisting God, but let's continue with this focus on reaching out to those who do not know Christ. Because I can guarantee you that their doors are closing, a lot of doors are closing, and they're becoming depressed, and they're becoming sad, and they're becoming perhaps even bitter about these doors closing, but they don't understand the reason because there is a bigger blessing that God wants in their life and that bigger blessing begins with Jesus. The will of God is not only to feel it, but also to do it. It's great for us that we're Christian and we know what God is all about, what Jesus is all about. You know, and we have that spiritual, you know, feeling that great, we're here, we're Christians, you know, we're saved. We know where we're going. If we die tomorrow, I know where I'm heading. It's not about feeling it only, but also doing it. Reaching out to others. Making sure that others understand. But it's not only about doing it, but doing it well. According to God's will. It's not our will, but God's. In the Word of God, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2, and we read this this morning, if I'm not mistaken, and it says, and do not be conformed. Romans 12, chapter 2, it says, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that, that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If a door closes on you, it's God's perfect will. If you want to go through that door, but that door is shut suddenly, perhaps, or it's already shut, it's God's acceptable and perfect will. Sometimes we're the ones that are stubborn, and we want to continue with something that is deep in our hearts that even doesn't even convince us, but we want that anyways. We become obstinate. Now, being obstinate is not the same as being persevering. You know, when you're stubborn, like me, and my wife reminds me how stubborn I am, all the time, I always tell her, no, 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 I'm not stubborn, I'm persevering. Two different things. And we need, as Christians, we need to remember that both things are different. I'm always telling people that, you know, all that can be at work, I'm saying that, hey, don't give up. Hey, keep going. Keep pushing, keep swimming. And again, there's a difference between obstinate and being persevering. So, I hope that um, you have a nice conversation with your wife tonight and ask her, am I obstinate or persevering? We must also thank God when doors are closed because we learn to, a little, to be a little more cautious on what we want to do and where we put our own faith and understanding. That's what I want. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm going to get, you know. Does it begin with God? Are you ready? 
Are you prepared? We need to make sure that we have a strategy and vision that is aligned with God's will. And how do we know this? Is when the Holy Spirit is telling us that that is what God wants for us. Because if you want to go through a door of success or whatever it is that you want, ask yourself, will this glorify God? Will I glorify God if I go through this door? I can guarantee you that the first thing you're going to say is, yes, I will. But God knows perhaps that, well, well, I won't. And that's why those doors close. Now, God wants something that I call bigger, better, stream, bigger and better blessings for you. The three B's. I wrote a little article about this, I don't know what, uh, 2016, 15? The three B's. Bigger, some of you may have read it already, bigger, better, a bigger, better blessing. Three B's. This is what God wants for you. And I'm not talking about financial. I'm talking about everything in your life. When you can go home, put your head on the pillow, and feel absolutely great and at peace. That's the blessing you're talking about. When, you're, when your kids are, are, are well, when they're not sick, when everything is going well at work, when everything is going well in your ministry, everything is going well at church, everything is going well with your spouse. Those are the blessings I'm talking about. The best reason for a door to shut. And we know that the doors are shut by God. And the most difficult to understand is that God wants something bigger and something better for you. So when the door closes, don't get angry. Get, become happy. Why? Because God wants something bigger and better for you. Your blessings. It is something that perhaps we want or desire very much. And you may think, that's going to give me peace if I have that. It could be a job, it could be a ministry, or some kind of activity that you that you may really want. But the truth is that if the door closes because God closes, first of all, but also because He wants to give you something bigger. God has bigger plans for you. You are here tonight. You are in this church because God has bigger plans for you. If you look back, to where you were and look at where you are now, I can guarantee you that you are seeing God's bigger blessing right now. You know, we don't understand why doors close, perhaps. You know, we did everything right. I studied. I was well behaved. You know, I cooked breakfast and lunch for my kids and my wife. I did everything she told me. Yet the door closed. God, but I did this the way you want it. But the door closed. Do you know why? You know, I, I, I was nice to that person in order for me to get that promotion. But the door closed. My personal story is summarized like this. For 10 years, God challenged me to go to Bible college and study for ministry. 10 years I avoided it. Ten years I walked away. Ten years I said, you know what? No, I didn't like the hype of being up here. That's all I like. And ten years I avoided the responsibility that it means to be up here. I wrestled with God, with His thought and with the calling. And no matter how much I avoided it and postponed it the way that Jonah did, I ran away from it. I ran and ran. And ran so far away, as the hymn says, in 1980-something. But God would eventually have me do what he wanted me to do. I asked him, what do you want from me? And he told me. And after a lot of bumps and a lot of bruises, I finally got there. So three years ago, I began Bible College. 
slowly but surely, beginning, like I said, is into full-time ministry. I wasn't ready. The door had closed. I wasn't ready. But I thought, you know what? I need to prepare myself. God is always opening doors for me to serve. And my prayer was always, God, take me somewhere where I can serve. And I can serve more and more. And God was so great that he brought me here with you so I could serve you. Or I could serve him by serving you. I am gladly attending his call here at Coffin Baptist Church. And God has given me some gifts to serve you, serve him by serving you. And I've been blessed that God has placed me here at Tubman Baptist Church with you. My beloved family, that I know for a fact that you pray for me so I can live my faith and service to God, our Lord Jesus. Now, if you don't pray for me, now's a good time to tell reminder that you need to pray for me because I pray for you. I thank you all, beloved friends and family and brothers and sisters in Christ, because I know that you do pray for me. And the challenges that God has placed in me, and I know also Adam, to be here leading and helping lead this beautiful church of Talking Baptist. And I want to thank everyone, especially if you're watching, if you are a listener or a reader or, or, or a critic, hey, I pray for you and I pray that God bless you as well. More and more every day. And may God open and close doors for you as well, just like He's done for me. God's nature is one to create and design new things. And it is my prayer as well in you that He does this in your lives as He closes doors and as He opens doors for you. God is a creator and designer off the door. And remember, He wants you to go through that door even if the door is locked because He wants to bless you anymore. There will be times though that we will become disheartened that we will become disappointed, that we will become frustrated, and we, we may begin to complain and become discouraged. We just want to give up, and we don't want to push, and we don't want to persevere. Hey, that's called life. However, the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10, close to where we began this afternoon, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not, be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Has a door closed on you today? Last week or this week? Or are you expecting doors to close for you in the next couple of days or weeks or months or years? God has total control over what happens to you, over what happens to me. He has control over those doors that will open and control over the doors that are going to shut. Again, what doors have opened for you or closed for you? Have you stopped to see what God has in mind? Why those doors have closed for you? Today is the day that you start thinking about what God, why God has closed them. Today is a day that you need to realign yourself to God's plan for you. Today is a day that you need to refocus on God and His will and the thoughts that He has for you and those doors that have closed or those doors that have opened. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29, 11, it says the following, it says, For I know, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future, to give you a future, to give you a future and hope. So always remember that God closes door that no man can open. Just like he opens doors that no man can shut. So what, when a door closes, 
you can say calm, cool, and collective. Because whatever happens, God always has bigger and better blessings for you. And as Romans 12, 2 says, and we read this before, it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what it is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. His will is perfect. His will is pleasant. And no matter what door closes or shuts, His will is pleasant and perfect. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege that you give us of being your children. We thank you for the privilege of us being here at Tottenham Baptist Church and being part of this church, Lord Jesus, that gives us the opportunity to serve, gives us the opportunity um, to serve you by serving others. We pray, Lord Jesus, that um, you continue using every single one of us to enhance, to promote your kingdom here on earth. We ask that you give us opportunities during the week to be able to talk to people who have had their doors closed. Give us the opportunity to be able to speak to them and tell them about you and who you are and what you have done for them. What you have done in order to forgive them, in order to redeem them, and also to share with them the knowledge of your will. We ask for Jesus that once again that you be with us that as this week continues or begins, may we be able to go out into the world knowing, Lord, that you are our rock, knowing that you are our Lord and King and Savior. We pray for those who, the people in Christ's church, that uh, you bless them, um, that you may use this event as evil as it may be, but let us use this. Uh, may they be able to understand that it is you calling at their door to bless them, to provide comfort, to provide mercy and love. So we pray for them, for every single family affected, for this town that was affected, for this city, for this country, and the world who is currently in shock for what happened. May you give everyone your peace uh, and comfort. Lord Jesus, we pray this in a whole lot more in your name. Amen. God bless.